Oh my goodness. There is so much value packed into today into today's episode. When I went to record this intro, I almost didn't even know where to start. Today, we're talking all about burnout, how it relates to your money and your business, how the trauma you might have experienced factors in, and how to utilize tools to help you. I'm joined today by Kylie Ota, an NLP certified business strategist who specializes in burnout recovery for high achieving female entrepreneurs. Kylie is a former army behavioral science specialist who spent 19 years in oil and gas, managing multi-million dollar projects and developing up and coming leaders. After healing from medically diagnosed adrenal burnout, she decided to make a drastic change and leave her lucrative career to preserve the health she fought so hard to recover. Kylie has adapted her work as a health coach and marketing operations specialist to create the burnout archetype quiz that helps entrepreneurs discover their business personality type and create a life and business that works for them. So let's do this. Hi, Kylie. Welcome to the Your Money, Your Life podcast. I'm really excited about our conversation today. Oh my gosh, me too. Uh, You know, I'm just having so much fun being inside of your academy and learning so much about finances. Not that I didn't know about finances before, but just having you as a sounding board to um, one talk about finances in a safe space and then be that sounding board for me when I feel like the stress of entrepreneurship and I'm like, ah, like, (laughs) I just love that your energy is very calming for me and really helped me get out of uh, my head space and, and spinning out about all the things and you helped to really ground me and really bring me back to the the center like why are we doing this like why the finances are so important not that it's the driving force of my business but it's really um like the foundation for everything that I'm doing so I appreciate you thank you oh thank you and I love having you in the academy um this I'm pretty excited about this because I just redid how we're going to do guest interviews for all the listeners. Um, this is going to be fun. And you're the first person I get to ask this question to. So what was one of your favorite memories growing up around money? It could be a trip. It could be a present re- you received activity, something, but a favorite memory growing up about money. Yeah. Uh, favorite Disneyland. <laughs> I mean, I'm still a Disney freak till this day. Like I'm a Disney fanatic till this day. And I just love everything about Disney. And now that, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and the marketing, I'm like the Disney marketing model and their monetization process is like, you don't understand it when you're a kid, but like being part of the Disney magic is part of their marketing experience. And I'm like, and then now that we live in California and we were annual pass holders like, and I got to see the marketing like in real time, I was like, wow, Disney is a marketing genius. I love that. I'm not the only one that does that. I'm like, wow, that was a really good marketing campaign. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, tell us a little bit about you and how you came to be a business burnout coach. Well, in like 2016, I kind of hit the the wall, so to speak. And I recently got remarried. So this is my third marriage. And I had experienced a lot of trauma and abusive partners prior to finding, you know, my Prince Charming. I'm I'm talking about Disney, right? And he was the one that was like, something's wrong with you. You're tired all the time. And I was a shift worker for 17 years up until this point, but so was he. And he's like, well, I've been a shift worker for 17 years and I'm not falling asleep all the time like you are. Like every time I would sit down, like my eyes would just close. And we'd go, (laughs) we'd go to the movies as like before the credits are even done or even like the previews are even done, like I'm dozing off. And he's like, Hey, we paid, we're talking about finances. Like we (laughs) paid good money to be here. Like (laughs) wake up and watch this movie. And it got to the point where he's like, I don't even, 
and his love language is quality time and he's it, it was really um putting a burden on our marriage and we, you know like I said we were newlyweds at the time and he was just getting frustrated and I said because I for me it was all normal right I was I was so busy especially as a single mom with kids both kids in sports and then also dealing with the divorce and dealing with a narcissist ex-husband a lot of drama and stress and I was just go 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 and so it was perfectly normal for me to sit down and just be like, you know, this dead. Hey, I just wanted to jump in real quick and make sure you caught two things. It was so important. Natalie's making a podcast appearance. Okay. So the first thing, if you caught that, it was an outside perspective that helped Kylie see that she needed the support and that it wasn't necessarily normal. That's why that fourth part of the unstoppable finances framework that we talk about all the time, the coaching, the outside support, somebody to help you look at it objectively, because to Kylie, it felt normal. It was like, it's just the way it is. Right. But in reality, it really wasn't. So that was so key. Now back to the interview. And he's like, that's not normal. And I don't want to live like that. So go to the doctor, get checked. And when I got, I was like, yeah, yeah. Like there's, whatever like it's it's gonna be a clean bill of health I actually had a lot of things wrong with me but the one thing that um stood out was the cortisol level I was at a 0.8 normal people the low level for normal people is 10 I was at a 0.8 so the doctor was like I don't even know how you walked in here today wow um but whatever you're doing like don't stop because um, normally they recommend people to get off a of caffeine and any stimulant mm-hmm. so that the body can start to heal. And he said, well, whatever you're doing, just keep doing that until, you know, the protocol and the supplements start kicking in. And I was like, okay. So I did that for a couple of months, but I was still like, my numbers weren't getting any better because they had taken me off of work. I, I was a shift worker, like I said. So the shift work was definitely a detriment to my healing. So they took me off of the shift work. And they're like, well, what's, you're, you're still not getting better. I had replaced going to work with doing all the busy work around my house. Mm. Right, all the the honey-do list that I couldn't yeah. get to because I was so busy at work. I'm like, oh, now I have time. So I was filling up my schedule with those things. And when, um, you know, after studying burnout, you know, extensively since 2016, where I became a health coach and that was my primary focus. And then as I was, you know, doing the health coaching thing, right, you're around a lot of different entrepreneurs. And so I became a business burnout coach because I realized that um, while originally I wanted to focus on corporate burnout with women, I realized that when you enter entrepreneurship, like the burnout just kicks up to a different level because you're wearing all the hats now. You literally can't turn anything off sometimes. It's like, okay, you're on social media. Okay, you're doing all the different parts. You're all the C's, right? You're the executive, (laughs) you're the marketing CMO, you're the COO, you're, you're the admin assistant, right? If you're a solopreneur, you're doing all the things. You're answering your own emails. And it, it just, I realized that while corporate women do have like their own challenges around burnout, it's a lot easier because the responsibilities are spread out through the corporation. But when like entrepreneurship is like a whole different animal. And I decided to focus on helping women in entrepreneurship to heal and recover from burnout. This episode is brought to you by Money Masters Inner Circle Academy. Ready to fall in love with your money? Then I'd love to help you inside Money Masters Inner Circle Academy. The Academy is the 12 month guided experience that blends the step by step strategy with the mindset work, the power up you need to finally ditch financial stress and struggle in your personal and business finances. Money doesn't have to be a struggle. You can systematically generate prosperity, create that impact, and make priceless memories with your family that you want to without having to constantly watch the bank account or overwhelm or the burnout of having to work 80 hour plus work weeks, living off of beans and rice, or telling your kids no forever. You're going to have more confidence, more fun, and more profitability using less of your precious time as you step into unstoppable finances and your unstoppable life. 
in honor of Valentine's Day and the spirit of love, if you enroll by the 20th of 2023, so February 20th, 2023, I'm going to give you a bonus of one month of unstoppable support. What that means is you get me in your pocket via Voxer to help you navigate as you dive into things. The hardest thing to do is getting started. And now I'll be right alongside with you every step of the way. To check it out and enroll, simply visit amycircacom forward slash academy, and I'll see you on the inside. Now back to the episode. And I created the burnout archetypes, which um, I am a personality quiz junkie. I'm a nerd like Myers-Briggs, DISC, all of them, um, communication styles, like all of them. I've studied them, like not only in corporate, but as when I found out about them from corporate and uh, rewind the tape a little bit more right out of high school, I enlisted in the army and I was a behavioral science specialist. So a mental health specialist, because I was so fascinated about um, psychology and how the brain works. And like, so I am a personality quiz junkie. I decided to create my own quiz (laughs) because I I realized that people in entrepreneurship, um, a lot of the quizzes that were built that I learned about in corporate were really built for people in corporate, you know, and the burnout archetypes that I built is really for people in entrepreneurship um, because we're running our own businesses. We're doing all the marketing ourselves. And so if you do happen to take the quiz, what you'll see is that the answer that you get at the end of the quiz is really geared towards entrepreneurs because like I said, burnout and entrepreneurship is like a whole different animal. I think the corporate women experienced a lot of that during COVID when we had, you know, like they were working from home and they had to really, like there was no delineation between work and life. Like there was no work-life balance essentially, right? Cause you're running your, they were running their corporate office from their home, which is what we as entrepreneurs do all day, every day, (laughs) all the time, right? So, you know, that's how I became the business burnout coach because I took the stuff that I learned from being a health coach and like understanding how cortisol works in the body and how your body responds to stress and all of that. And I applied it to entrepreneurship and everything that I had been doing as a project manager, because I was a project manager in corporate, running multi-million dollar projects. And then I took that and I applied that to entrepreneurship. And I was helping entrepreneurs, specifically women in entrepreneurship, run their businesses as a project manager. And, you know, seeing that, um, the the burnout issues and the struggle is really real for burnout with women. And one of the things that I'm hoping that you're picking up here is that Kylie's journey along the way helped her to be where she is now. So she hadn't have gone, she hadn't gone through all the struggles that she had in the past. She wouldn't have the success and the authority and everything that she has now. So many times I see that we let our past mistakes hold us back. And it's almost like that we're ashamed of them, but I'm the same way. The past experiences and the past quote mistakes that we've made in the past led me to the path where I'm at now so that I can help you step into unstoppable. And I love how clearly it's laid out in Kylie's story. So I wanted to make sure that you were picking up on that. And if you are someone who's done things in the past or feel like you've tried everything or you're hopping around or you keep pivoting, just know that all of those steps along the way are leading you to where you're supposed to be and feel peace in that and that you're knowing that you're on the journey and you're doing the right thing. All right, let's go back to Kylie. Someone was asking me, well, you work primarily with men in corporate. Why are you working with females now? It's because burnout is different for men and women. I'll just say it. We as women, we have way more responsibilities than men. Sometimes I know there are some outliers who may be listening to this podcast, but I know as women, we take on a lot, right? So we're, we run our own businesses, but we also are the mom, the chef, the chauffeur, you know, the housekeeper. We wear 
not only all of the business hats, but we also wear all of the homemaking hats as well. So just, you know, just burnout in females and entrepreneurship. I just felt like that was such a melting pot of all the things that um, one I struggled with and things that I really want to help women with um, in their businesses. So thank you. You're welcome. I love that. And I love how um, your, your steps and your along the way just kind of like built, it's almost like this laid the perfect path for you that like, so that you are here where you are now. We're going to talk about the burnout archetypes, but I have to say, like for those listening, we're going to give the link here in a little bit for you to go check it out. And of course it's in the show notes and all of that, but you should go like try this because I honestly was a little skeptical, like in the middle of taking this, I was like, I don't know like how this is going to actually like show me my burnout archetype. Uh, but it was totally spot on. So it was a lot of fun, like to take there at the end. Cause I was like, I don't know. And then totally blew me away, nailed it completely. So what are the burnout archetypes and how can people use it when it comes to managing their finances? Yeah. So there are four major archetypes. There's the powerhouse. Uh, the popular archetype, the philanthropist, and the perfectionist. You notice, I, I love alliteration. So I just pick P words that kind of fit the description, okay? So. I totally love that because I love a good alliteration too. <laughs> so actually, the archetypes actually fit over this grid that I call the time wheel. And the time wheel is actually, if you draw a circle, cut it into four quadrants, and it's T-I-M-E, the acronym. So T-I-M-E across the wheel. It stands for time, ideas, money, and energy. So the powerhouse archetype is really motivated by money and success. And that's what's her driver. So those, um, in the things at the time wheel are really the drivers behind each archetype. So she's driven by money and success. And that's why she's burnt out because she's she's always going after the next you know, um, if she's in corporate, she's looking for that next, you know, certificate to put on her wall. If she's in entrepreneurship, she's really looking for that next level of success. Like if she's at six figures, okay, well, my next milestone is seven figures, right? She's always reaching for that next star. And she probably likes a lot of, like she had this, the chart with all the gold stars and she loves, she, she loves accomplishments. And that's how she, you know, really assesses success in her life. But that's also the, um, on the shadow side of that, that's what makes her burnt out is because she's always wanting more. And not that it's wrong to want more, but not to the detriment of yourself, which is what happened to me when I was in corporate. I was like, let me do all the things so that I can move this corporate ladder and get out of the shift working world into, you know, more steady like office job. And I just worked myself almost into a grave. Thank God I saw the doctor when I saw him. Right. So that's the powerhouse archetype. Now, the thing that stood out to me about the powerhouse and when I'm thinking about the unstoppable finances framework and the objections, and maybe we'll call them pitfalls that I hear. If you're a powerhouse, you're probably thinking, I just need to hit the next goal. I just need to hit that next accomplishment and then we'll be set. Right. Sound familiar? The popular archetype I know now we're kind of going like up on, on the wrong way of the wheel, but is the ideas quadrant. So the reason why she's the popular archetype is because she is a social butterfly. And so that should give you a pretty good explanation of like the archetype because she's a social butterfly. She loves going around like from idea to idea, like each idea is like a flower, you know, and mm-hmm. she loves hopping from idea to idea, but she has issues with execution because she loves all of her her ideas it's like a garden it's like I love all of you but and I can't I can't pick which one to just sit on and make a home on so that's why in entrepreneurship um she's not necessarily making the money that she wants because she's kind of too busy having too much fun she loves networking she loves getting to meet new people but yet the the execution the execution piece is where she kind of struggles with and if you if you remember right, the ideas and the execution piece is they're on opposite sides of the wheel. So there's that. So going around this way on the wheel, it's the time. The time quadrant 
is the philanthropist. So it again, it's the time is on opposite side of the wheel as money. So she's very driven by people. And how I came up with the time and how it relates to relationships is if you look at your calendar, when you're writing appointments in your calendar, they are most likely with people. Mm. Right. So time, like the way that I was looking at it was time is um, if you have issues with time, your calendar is probably full of other people's problems. So it's not that you have issues with time management. You have issues with decoupling from other people's um, problems or energies. And you, because you have such a supportive energy, people will naturally gravitate to you. So you're probably a very good coach. You know, people love talking to you probably, you know, um, that's how I was like growing up. That's why I went into mental health when I joined the military was because I, I was like, all of my friends were coming to me for boyfriend problems. You know, I had guy friends coming with girlfriend problems. I'm like, oh. And then when I took a AP psych class, I was like, wait, people get paid to do this? Like just to talk to people all day? <laughs> it's like, this is nuts. So I went into mental health because I love talking to people. But what I realized, and my husband will attest to this, he's like, how can you be like a time management coach if like you're not really good with your time? And for me, I realized um, my time management issues are because I had a hard time decoupling from conversations, like say a conversation, like someone needed me and we're on the phone and we're just talking. I'm like, oh, I really need to decouple from this conversation, but let me get closure first before I just leave this person hanging high and dry. So these are the people that do a lot of free coaching and they want to help, you know, people. And they're like, well, I'm more concerned about helping people. Like that's, I want to have impact. I'm not necessarily concerned with the income. So these people kind of tend to struggle with the income and the finances. Um, and then the, the last archetype is the uh, perfectionist. So they fall in the E quadrant, which is a double E because it's energy and execution. So, um, and there's also another E in that quadrant in the, in the sub parts of the quadrant, which is environment. So the perfectionist, they, they like to have everything a certain way and they're very analytical. So when they make decisions, a lot of times they go around and around in a circle and they have issues um, with, with, doing something and releasing something in, what I call it, into the wild right they have issues releasing their ideas and their offers out into the wild because it's not good enough like everything that they do is not good enough so they keep going around and around in the circle and I kind of I call it the churn and burn where it's like oh I want to do this but yet it's, it's not ready yet. And they keep putting it on the table and then taking it off, putting it on the table and taking it off. So um, this entrepreneur, she has right, the perfectionistic type. And if she has a team, the perfectionist in her, um, they, she'll have her team redo things because it's not perfect. So like she's wasting a lot of time, money and energy on perfecting everything. When, you know, she could use the 80-20 rule and just get it out there, even though it's not perfect, but because um, she has been judged in the past for being less than perfect, she probably has a perfectionistic parent uh, or a judgmental parent. And so putting herself out there at less than 100% really, um, it really messes with her. And she, it's not that she's not confident, but she's... Um, she deals with a lot of imposter syndrome where she always feels like she's not good enough. So she, she'll never put herself out there a hundred percent. And so she, therefore she's not making the kinds of money that she could, because she's really good at pretty much everything that she does, but yet she's leaving money on the table because she's just not putting herself out there enough because until it's perfect. 
So if you're aligned or you have the perfectionist archetype as one of your archetypes, the thing that's coming to mind for me and your finances that might be showing up, this would be that perfectionist. Maybe you're going all or nothing in like so many different ways. This can be all or nothing on the income side. And that was kind of what Kylie was talking about. And that, so that would be the offensive side, but you can also do the same thing in your defense. You're putting off the finances and the budgeting portion or getting control of the impulse spending or going all or nothing and doing the no spend challenges because you have to be that all in. Now I'm kind of seeing that on the powerhouse as well. And I think we talk about this later in the interview, but powerhouse perfectionist, when I took the quiz, that was, those are like my two, but those are the things to be aware of if the perfectionist archetype is coming up for you. Now, there was so much goodness, so many nuggets inside this interview. I couldn't, when I went to edit this, I couldn't cut out everything. It was so important. So we're actually splitting this interview into part two. So make sure you're subscribed so that you can hear the rest of the interview with Kylie. It's so golden. We're kicking off the next part with talking about trauma and the trauma from your past and how that affects your archetype and your finances. And you're going to want to hear it. So that's it for now. We'll see you soon on the Your Money, Your Life podcast. Thank you so much for listening to the Your Money, Your Life podcast. Wondering what's next? When you're ready, there are different levels of support that you can use on the path to creating unstoppable finances and your unstoppable life. After all, your finances are unique and your support should be too. Ultimately, we'll create a customized plan to ditch financial struggle for good that works for you, your goals, your priorities, your life. Go to workwithamy.com to get started with one of our most popular programs, or you can book a Q&A call with me and we'll figure out what your next step should be.